Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Tort. My main goal for this episode is to build the cats a cat house. And every time I say that, it sounds like I'm talking about a brothel. But no, I mean literally a house for the cats. And I'm going to try to go all out on it and probably make it more intricate than anything I've built before. Look at all these hairballs. Hairy cats. Oh, and as you can tell, the baby grew up. I don't even remember which one was the baby. I think it was you. I don't know. They all look exactly the same. Um, I'm going to name them at some point, so you'll actually be able to tell them apart. Right, well, before we get to the building stuff, one thing I do want to mention is that now that I've gotten the soybean, if you remember, I got one soybean from one of those Pam's Harvestcraft Gardens. Well, I used a bunch of bone meal on it and grew a bunch. So I filled up like half of that field up there. That's all soybean. So I've gotten a bunch of soybeans and I've started processing it in the presser which I'm using for the first time. So the way it works is, uh, let me take this out for the moment. So if you just you get soybeans from the plants, if you put a soybean at the top there, it'll process it into two different things, silken tofu and grain bait. The grain bait, I don't use it, doesn't matter, just delete it. The silken tofu is good on its own, restores a surprisingly large amount of health actually and saturation, and it gives you 3% protein, which is pretty amazing. But uh, I think the best thing to do with it is process it again. So if you process silken tofu again, you get two different things. You get firm tofu, which doesn't heal as much, but the really nice thing is that you get soy milk as well, which gives you dairy. So just from a simple soybean, I can get the two main food groups that I've been completely missing, protein and dairy. Pretty fantastic. And I'm wondering, I haven't actually tried this yet, but I'm wondering if there's some recipes I can use the milk and the tofu for. Let's see. Nothing obvious. Oh, cheese. Yes. The cheese is probably going to unlock a whole bunch of stuff. Also, that literally just looks like... <laughs> it's just an ingot. It's a cheese ingot. Disgusting. So what is that? Milk, salt, and pot. Okay. Um, can't do anything else with it yet. I probably need some dough. Like, I imagine you could probably make all sorts of sandwiches with that, or like, burgers. Let's mess around a bit. So let's like, make some flour, make some dough. Make some more salt. Make some bread. Yeah, we're probably going to need the bread to make a lot of things. Um, hmm. Okay, so that's opened up toast. Sure. Now I've got toast. Can I make a sandwich of some sort? I just need to make a million of everything. I'm still... I must be missing basic things. Like, isn't there ketchup? Yeah, there's ketchup. Can I make like a burger or something now? No? Okay, whatever. <laughs> I'll figure it out later. For now, I'm just gonna eat these to get up my dairy and protein. You can see I'm doing really well on everything else, but I've just started getting my dairy and protein up. Already! So much hair! 14 hairballs. Alright. Let's see if we got any gems in here. Let me delete some of these intermediate things. I can always remake them later. Oh, and a ketchup. Let's see what we got. Wood, fish, ink sack, gravel, some experience, clay, more fish, raw beef, string. <laughs> I'm not sure all what you can get from it. I haven't gotten anything that seems rare yet. Just stuff like that. And this I can just pop for a little bit of experience. Emphasis on little. Okay, anyway, so, building stuff. I gotta find out where I wanna put this place. Um, and one of the things I've been experimenting with is other block types. So there's a mod in here called, what is it, X-Tones? Yeah, X-Tones, which is, um, I believe it's kind of like a remake of Z-Tones from an older version of Minecraft. 
It's kind of similar to Chisel in that it just adds a bunch of different textured and colored blocks. As you can see, it adds all these. Many different types to choose from. So I've been messing around with that, and um, there's some stuff in it that I think I want to use. It is a little bit weird, though, how it works. It's not as easy to use as Chisel. So to start it, you basically put an X-Tone tile. This is like the base item. You put that in a chisel, and then you can make any one of these types. Like, let's say we make a bunch of mist. And then from that, if you select this and hold down a hotkey and scroll, you can change the type between the different variants of mist. You can see it says mist 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, blah, blah, blah. But it's got to be back to type number one to go back into the chisel to change it to another type. So this one you see, you can't chisel. But if I turn it back to mist one, now I can and turn it to a different type. So it's really hard to know which one to go for. Because you look at this list and if you pick one, well, there's 16 other like subtypes of that one, but you don't really know what they are. This list here doesn't really help that much. So it's kind of unwieldy to use. Also, something that I don't like about the X-Tone tiles is none of them seem to have any sort of special, like, smart textures. I don't know what they'd be called, but a lot of Chisel has these smart textures where when you put them together, they recognize the fact that they're together and they connect. And the borders change and, you know, they make these, like, outlines and stuff. And all this stuff kind of connects together. Well, the X-Tones unfortunately don't do that, so the blocks are completely separate. They have no connection to each other. So it makes for something that just doesn't look as... I don't know, it doesn't look as put together. Very separate patterns. But you can still do some cool stuff with them, and they fully support being chisel embedded. So that's nice. So I'm going to mess around with those. As well as some chisel stuff, I'm sure. And I'm going to find out where I want to put this place. I think I'm going to put it right here, just a little bit off from the pathway up to the dimensions. Yeah, this will be a good place. And I think I also want to mess around with Architecture Craft again. Don't know if I'll make any roofs, but I think I'll try to use a little bit of Architecture Craft stuff. I know they have some really nice window frames and windows that look really cool. So I want to mess around with some parts of Architecture Craft that I haven't used yet. Just laying out some rough shapes. I'm definitely... <laughs> this is not... I'm not going to make the whole thing out of this Azure. Also, one of the things I've found in Chisel is there's these Futura blocks. Which are just stone and a single piece of redstone in the center of it. It can turn into some strange stuff, including one that apparently doesn't have a texture. Anyway, I think this will look pretty nice. Yeah, beautiful. So let's try some of the stuff in Architecture Craft, like rounded posts. Want to try out the windows. And also the archways. Just see how these look. Yeah, it looks really nice. Nice and smooth. Nope. So I think the way the window frames work is, as you can see, as you move them along, they kind of connect. And I think you just put whatever window uh, panes you want inside of them. I think I've got some here. Yeah. There we go, it's, hmm. That doesn't look right. You can barely see the glass. Um, can I chisel the window panes? No. What if I used full glass? I don't know, that just looks kind of weird. No, it really does have to be 
a pain. Odd. Okay, and that's what the archways look like. Pretty cool. If I could find a double wide door, I think that'd work quite well. I think I'm going to try making a large part of this out of this paper stuff. So there's kind of like a paper type of block from chisel. And there's also a sort of papery kind of... Uh, I don't know. I'm sure this isn't just paper. There's got to be a proper name for this style of stuff. But there's also a similarly styled door from the Melissa's Doors mod. So let me see if I can get this to work. The door... Like, let's see if I can get a two-wide door and then maybe make an archway? Does a paper archway even make sense? I don't know. We'll see how this works. And there's all sorts of different styles of this, too. Like, maybe horizontally striked would be good for the outside wall? Oh, well, there's even a door type, apparently. Just visual, though, I think. But yeah, let's try this. You know, last time I messed around with these paper walls, I, I did use them once a long time ago. They made the sound, and they still do. They sound like you're planting, well, crops. But yeah, I think that could look really cool. So let's see how the doors work. I think they join together, and if you click on them... Mm, Okay, I've had that happen before. I'm pretty sure usually they join up and become kind of like a single entity and will open properly. There we go. Yeah, that is really nice looking. I love it. Those totally match in style. A two wide door that opens as one. By the way, just one little note. Um, if anyone is going to actually create a place for cats to stay at, I really recommend not making the walls out of paper. Cats have claws. Claws plus paper equal... Not a good place to put cats. <laughs> this would totally not work at all. Oh my god, cats would just scratch on the paper and just rip it to shreds. Cats like to use their claws. I don't know, maybe if you train them really, really, really well to use a scratching post, you might be okay. But it'd be quite a gamble. Anyway, yeah, let me mess around with trying to create a sort of structure out of these paper blocks. Okay, check this out. I'm starting to mess around with maple planks. Unfortunately, maple planks and the uh, maple tree doesn't come from default Minecraft. It comes from the Natura mod. And as such, as is the case with I think every tree that isn't in default Minecraft, you can't chisel it. So you're just stuck with just the plain planks. But just the plain planks look pretty cool. So I'm trying to architecture graph. I made the archway here. Obviously, I need to do something with the top. But did the archway, and then there's these... What the heck are they called? Uh, Doric Capital? So sort of like, that's the top piece, that's the middle piece, and then that's the base. So... Middle piece, put the bases down. That looks pretty freaking cool. I just need to do something with the top to make it not look weird. That looks really cool. Also, I have a fantastic idea of what to do to all these paper walls using chiseling bits, but I'll get to that probably at the end. I'm thinking of doing a lot of chiseling. Look at all these fur balls. What do you got for me today? Sort this so I can see what gets added. What do we got? Eh, bunch of the same stuff. Nothing exciting. It's nice that you get fish from the cats, because that's what they used to eat. Pretty handy. Never need to fish again. Bottle of enchanting. Already another furball. Here, have some XP, kitties. Okay, I guess I'll take it. Thank you. So I made a bit of a roof overhang out of the maple wood. But unfortunately, the... Doric capital stuff that I was using before does not work. Because, as you can see, it kind of overshoots it. It's too big. So I'm trying to see if I can make some sort of 
other pillar that might work. So we're with it. That was classical. So all the classical stuff is definitely too big. But perhaps that? Whoops. No, I uh, didn't, <laughs> didn't mean to take that. All right, let's try these. Mm, no, that definitely doesn't look right. Let's try this. Uh, I mean, that works, <laughs> but... That doesn't really work. Hmm. Although I suppose this is what's going to be up top, right? Is the archway even going to work? I think the archway might not work, because I think that's going to have the same problem of over... Uh. Yeah, see, that doesn't work either. Hmm. Maybe I should make more of an overhang? I wonder how that would look if the overhang wasn't direct, wasn't one block outside of the dimensions of the house, but actually two. Nah, I don't like how that looks. That looks strange. That does come out too far. Huh. Interesting. I think I actually kind of like it. So I went back to the old style of roof and I just tried to make this old pillar system work. Just built it up with the kind of floating... Uh, archway here and then try to put something on top of it and next to it that would make it look good So I just put these kind of like wedges on the corners So that made the corners look fine, but then what to do with the top? Well, I really had no idea So I just started messing around with some stuff and I ended up using these gabled roof ridges And I just plopped them on top and they just did this weird thing. Yeah, let me show you They're sort of like a multi-block structure. Put them down and they do different things. If you put it down in the wrong spot, it does something weird like this. Again, it's made, meant for a roof, so it's not really meant for this. But if you place it in the right area, it does that. Kind of joins together. Looks a little bit strange. But you know what? I kind of like it. And it also kind of looks like cat ears, doesn't it? This is a very strange structure I'm building, a mixture of, like, paper walls, and, like, Roman pillars, and cat ears. Who makes pillars out of wood? I don't think that's really a thing, is it? I don't know, maybe it is. But still, it, it looks strange, but really cool. And yes, I am keeping the azure as the, as the, the bottom. Colorful, I like it. Alright, things are starting to come together. There we go. Check it out. I made a proper roof. And yes, it does take a very, very long time using architecture craft. But it's pretty cool looking. <laughs> that looks so cool, I love it. Now, I'm not sure sure what to do about the roof. I could just leave it like this. Um, I'm pretty sure if I tear this down, it's going to look kind of strange. Yeah, you'll start to see all these weird things revealed. I don't think the roof tiles look very sensible from the bottom. No, it just looked like that. So I guess I'll leave that in place, but I feel like I want to replace it with something. I don't want the entire inside to be paper except for the ground. I feel like there should be something different about the ceiling. Either a different texture of paper or just a different block entirely. I also got to think about windows and kind of what I'm going to do with the inside. Because I think as far as the outside goes, the structure of it, I think I'm pretty well done except for stairs. There we go. Got some stairs. So I made the ceiling the same block type as the bottom, the azure, but just with a little bit of a, a variant of it. Variant 3. Looks a little bit dark, but I'm going to light this place up more by the time I'm done. 
Now, let me see if I want to do anything more with the outside before I kind of move into interior decoration. All right, check this out. So I think what I'm going to do is chisel in bits, kind of a inset, set in, chisel away at the paper parts. You might not even be able to tell any difference when you're just straight on like this, but check it out. I think it looks really cool. If you're not moving, it doesn't really look that much different, but when you are, it gives it so much more depth, and that's more how it would actually look. It wouldn't just be like a solid thing of paper. It's a wood frame with like a paper sheet in the middle. Unfortunately, when you do that, it does seem to give you this odd, like, tiny little line of white around the very edges, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. I think it's worth it. It's like about one of each type of design here, so I'm going to copy them and replace. There we go. Finished it all. It's a kind of subtle effect. I, I don't know if it'll be super obvious after compression on YouTube. Hopefully it will be. But it gives it a lot more depth. I wonder if I can do a similar thing for these up here. What if I kind of cut out like the black parts, made them recessed? There we go. Just a little subtle effect. Just one bit taken out of them. There we go. Look at all the depth in this room. It's so deep. I don't think I can do anything with the floor, though. I don't think it has spots that are kind of dark enough to justify a recessed spot. Oh. Hmm, I didn't do the inside of the doors. Eh, that's alright. I don't think it needs it. looking so cool. Such excessive detail that almost nobody will notice unless you jetpack your face into the ceiling so you can actually see it. Cool. Just extended out some of the dirt near the house so it's not such a kind of sheer cliff and there's a little walkway around here. And also replaced all the pulsel with dirt, soon to be grass, should look a lot prettier. I also want to put flower pots, I think on the outside here, and maybe around the other side of the place too. The only problem is I was trying to stuff flowers into these flower pots, and unfortunately it looks like they will only accept the vanilla flowers, which I don't have many of, so I think I'm going to have to collect some flowers. Like, I'd love to go back to that lavender field, but I'm pretty sure lavender is biomes of plenty. Yeah, so that wouldn't be able to go inside. There was the flower field where we spawned, though. I think that was vanilla flowers. But that was really far away, and I don't need that many flowers. I'm just going to go around and see if I can find some flowers. Alright, got nine poppies, three dandelions. Let's put one of each. Nice. Okay, I was thinking of putting more around here, but then I thought, what if... When I go to make the windows, what if I make a kind of uh, windowsill? and then put flowers in the windowsill, like a window planter box kind of thing. It couldn't really be a box, but still, I could make some sort of a windowsill thing. Something for pots to to rest on. Um, let me see, let me try to figure out where I want the windows. I want it to be really open. You know, I don't want this to be a claustrophobic prison for the cats. I want it to be really nice, they can look outside and bird watch and look at whatever they want and take in the sun. So I'm trying to make it really open. I think this will look pretty good. Now I could just shove glass into these open spaces, just glass blocks, but I think I want to do something fancier. I really, I really wish those window frames would look good. They just really don't, the window frames from Architecture Craft. So I think I'm going to make my own window frames. But um, that's more of an interior thing. Let me see if I can get some sort of a uh, like planter box thing going on out here for plants. All right, let's experiment a bit here. So for the first time, I think 
since I've been using chisel and bits in this series, I don't think I've really done much additive stuff. It's almost always been subtractive. So let's try some additive stuff. I'm going to try to make the window sill thing out of this material. So let's go ahead and just eat this. Connected material. Same material. There we go. That should eat the whole block. <laughs> there we go. Nom nom. We just got a ton of bits. So now I can place them. Dang, okay, so I think I'm going to have to nix the idea of putting flowers on a sort of like windowsill box thing. It seems, for whatever reason, you can't place flower pots on top of a chiseled block. You just can't. You can put it on seemingly anything else that's a normal block. But if it's been chiseled like this, or like this windowsill thing I'm trying to make, just doesn't work, doesn't matter if it's dirt or wood or whatever. Yeah, just one place. I could do something like that where I have a normal block right up here for them to sit on. And then kind of try to smooth out the places around it. I mean, for like a planter box outside your window, it's huge. It's so big. I don't know. Do I like it? Uh, I don't know. Also, I think these three here... I'm not sure, but I think they may never turn to grass because there's technically a block directly above them. So it might forever look kind of ugly. I don't know. Um, I'm going to try leaving it for now. We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see if these turn to grass or not. Let's put some flowers in there. Pretty cool looking. Let's see how it looks from the inside. That is beautiful from the inside. Hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna leave it for now. See if I can make it work. So I'm thinking once again made out of maple wood for the window frame. Gonna make it four bits wide and I'm thinking the two bits in the center are gonna be filled with glass. Um, let me see if I can copy this in a non-painstaking way. Um, let's see. So we want it. Add it. No. Placement? Yes. That's going to work for the sides. What about the top? Alright, it doesn't look like I, there's any way to do that the way I want to. But I think what I can do... Let me clear the design. Copy that. I think I can probably do an impose or placement. Um... Additive? No, dang. No, I, I guess there's just no way to do that, really. I think I just have to manually paste it. Or create separate designs for these kind of middle pieces. And a separate design for a corner piece. There we go. Got the window frames in place. It actually ended up being faster just to draw the whole thing. Just doing draw region all the way from here all the way to there. Just for each line. Much, much faster. Okay, let me figure out what sort of glass I want. I don't think I want default, so let's see what we can chisel it into. And also, let me... Um, let me test something after I chisel it into something else. So, I don't want it to be, like, invisible, right? I want you to be able to tell that there's actually glass there. But, I also do have to keep in mind the fact that... I think... All this glass has the sort of connected texture thing. Let me demonstrate. So this, yeah, you see it connects. It doesn't have a border in the center, as if they're separate blocks. It connects and just has the border around the outside. But I believe if I chisel this, that's not what I meant to do. Other chisel. Just eat a bunch of it. I'll just eat all of it. I think if I lay down these bits, and by the way, if you hold down the uh, shift key, it displays like the full block version of the bits, because you can't really tell what the heck it is from just the bit itself. So it's like, which one is the glass I just did? This one. Right, so I'll just do a simple draw region. I don't know. I guess... Like that? Yeah. <laughs> 
So that's the sort of like that's sort of the way I want to draw it into the window frame. But as you can see, the fact that it's bits means that it doesn't really obey the connected texture thing. So it it treats it as if they're all separate blocks. So I gotta be pretty choosy about which one I want. I want a type of glass that does not have a border. Which, unfortunately, might like super, super limit what I can do. Um, actually, crap, I think there's only one that doesn't have a border. I think this one is the only one that doesn't have a border. Okay, let's try this. How does this look? It's really not that visible. It's really not that visible. I don't like it that much. These others really look like they have borders. Some of them are a little bit hard to tell. Like, I don't even know what this is. Oh, God, no. Yeah, if you just destroy glass normally, it just breaks and you don't really get anything back. Huh. Are there any other glass things from other mods? Like, I don't know, is there a... Oh, there's stained glass. Hmm. Interesting. And that's actually from Chisel. Yeah, it looks like for each color there's a type of stained glass that doesn't really have a border. Looks like this one doesn't have a border. All that does... There's a lot of types of glass. Yeah, so it looks like what I have to choose from is this one here. This type. Or some type of... Any type of these colored glasses. So how do I make them? Sometimes it's hard to find a base recipe. Like, these are all just... Hey, you can chisel it to a different type. It's like, okay, cool. H how do I make it? I don't know. Alright, well, they're blocks of stained glass, so I'm gonna take a poke at this and assume that you probably make the stained glass for a Minecraft of the color you want, and then you just chisel it. So, I don't think I want something that's gonna tint the outside and make it look actually like a different color. So, I'm gonna try white. Yeah, just a bunch of glass and some bone meal in the center. Let's see if I can chisel that to what I want. Yeah, looks like that's going to work. So streaked looks like the kind that doesn't have a border. Yeah. Christ, I got so much weird garbage in my inventory. Looks ghostly. Hmm. I don't know. It just makes everything outside look grayish. I don't know if I like it. Hmm. I think I like this one more. I, I don't like the cloudiness of this one. There we go. Yeah, not super happy with the glass, but I think it's okay. And overall, I think the effect of this whole inset thing with the frame and the glass and the flowers over here. I think it, it's looking really cool. This place is gorgeous. I'm so happy with it so far. I'm not even, like, close to done. I mean, I guess I'm pretty much finished with the exterior, but there's so much to do on the inside. I mean, we gotta, we gotta catify this house. We gotta add scratching posts and, like, uh, window beds and shelves for them to go up and down. Okay, I've got a little development platform, so this is where I'm going to develop all the things that I'm going to put inside. Because I think pretty much all of it, or maybe literally, yeah, probably literally all of it is going to be chisel and bits stuff. So, first thing I want to design is a scratching post. Going with the maple theme, going to make it out of maple wood. And, by the way, I planted a couple maple trees around there. One there, and one there. I think it'll look appropriate to have maple trees around all the maple wood of the cat house. Okay, so let's set this to draw a region. There we go. Yeah, I realize when you go to place something, 
and you're gonna you know build something out of chisel and bits it's hard to see the borders when everything is just the same type of thing with no clear border so replace this with dirt so I can easily see where the border is so I can make this whole thing symmetrical so draw a region and make it out of wood let's make the base let's see two three four five two three four five from here to two three four five Five. That doesn't look symmetrical. No, dang it, it's not. Oops. There we go. Alright, now it's symmetrical. So that'll be the base of the scratching post, and then, of course, the actual post on the inside is a little bit smaller. I'll go in two from each side. Yep, that'll be good. Then I'll do connected plane. Build this up. This is going to be what the like rope or whatever the scratching material goes on. Make that a little bit taller. You want to make sure the cat can extend its whole body and scratch all the way from the top down. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So it's going to be a little bit higher than a block, that's fine. Okay, so now I need some sort of a, like, rope material. And I have no idea what to use. I need something that I can just eat away at with chisel and bits and then put it on there. Something that looks like rope. So I need, like, a rope block, but is that even a thing? Hmm. Well, I couldn't find anything super good, but I think this is about the best I'm going to get. Um, at least easily. The, the easiest way to build something out of chiseling bits is to use something that has a texture you want and then when you place the bits it kind of just automatically applies the texture to the bits. Alternatively, you could basically create your own texture by taking solid blocks of a single color and then just placing individual bits of each color exactly where you want it to be. Basically doing pixel art, more or less. I'm not gonna do that, that's way, way, way too much work. So this is from Xtones, it's kind of sort of ropey color, and it's got a little bit of a texture to it, but no border. So I think this might work. Let's try it. So I'm just gonna do connect plane. Oh. Oh right, it's doing the whole plane of the whole block. Um, I don't think I want that, but I'll just remove some of the bottom part, because usually a scratching post doesn't have the entire thing covered. So I'll remove a little bit of the top and a little bit of the bottom, because right now this just <laughs> looks bizarre. There we go. I think it looks like a pretty good scratching post. Yeah, definitely not the ideal kind of rope texture, but it's good enough. Alright. First design down. Let's go place it inside. Where's the bottom? Where's the top? Ah, here it is. Might move it later, but just put it inside for now. Alright, we got a scratching post. Um, oh yeah, I'm gonna need a litter box too. Well, one thing at a time. I think I'm gonna try making a litter box next. So I think I'm gonna try using this as the litter box itself, and then gravel as the litter. Eat both of those. I really wish I could find that sound effect, by the way. That bloop bloop. I know it's extremely loud. Um, but I can't find where it is to turn it down. No idea. So let's go back to draw a region. I'm thinking... It's going to be kind of a small litter box, but just to make it practical, I want it to fit in a one block radius. <laughs> radius? One block area. Blocks aren't exactly radiuses. You can't really radius a block, can you? Oop. So I'm going to leave a one block gap on two of the sides. Litter boxes are usually longer than they are wide, so I'm trying to make it a little bit rectangular rather than just a pure box. But... Yeah, so we'll do that, and then let's do a draw region. Make a little ridge. And 
Now I'm going to build up the ridge. Right. Now we can do connected plane. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Alright, and then let's give it a little bit of a lip. That's why I put it in one bit on the two sides, because I want to give it a little bit of a lip. Litter boxes usually have that. Let's do a draw region. Okay. And then what if, to give it a little bit of 3D look, what if I took this away? A little more dimension. Kind of looks like it, you know, curves around a little bit. Yeah. Alright. I think that's good. Um, I probably should make a little entryway in it, right? Like that? <laughs> God, that looks way too small. Yeah, let's... Whoop. Let's go over more. Yeah, that looks better. Little entryway. I mean, in reality, like, that's way too low and the litter would just, like, spill out, but it, it's fine. It's fine. Now let's put the litter inside, draw a region. Ah, oh, I'm getting rid of it again. Forgot left click. I keep forgetting left click gets rid of it, right click places it. <laughs> that really looks like litter, doesn't it? Oh my god. That's so cool! I just made a freaking litter box. That was way easier than I thought it'd be. Alright, um... Let me see if I can fit multiple litter boxes. Ideally... You should have one litter box per cat, plus I think one extra. But... I mean, I've got three cats, that's four litter boxes, and the space I made for them is kind of small. So I don't know if four litter boxes are really going to fit too comfortably. Let's see. Placement? Yeah. There we go. Four. Well, if I'm going to put down four, let's put them here. Okay. Yeah, that might work. It just depends. Once I fill this room up with all the other stuff, I mean... Okay, they've got litter boxes. They've got a scratching post. Just, just thinking of floor stuff, so ignoring shelves that go up and things like that. They're going to need, what, food, water? Um, that might be it for what else goes on the floor, so... Yeah, this might not be too cramped. I think I'm going to try to make bowls now. I'm going to make them yellowish. Let's eat that. Now this, I'm not so sure about. I mean, the easiest thing, it'd be super, super easy just to make it a square or a rectangle. What if I tried to round it, though? I think that's about the best my circle's going to get. I'm not really sure how to make a sort of pixel art circle look like a circle. It's kind of circly, I guess. I just started with a just with a square, I just drew a square and then just started taking away the corners. Yeah, I'll go with that. Alright, I'm gonna build up a lip so I can actually hold something. Okay, there we go. And for food, I think I'm gonna try using dirt. It looks weird here because you know it's dirt, but I think once it's away from an actual bit of dirt, I think it'll look better. And uh, let me try to give it a little bit of 3D look, maybe. What if I just, like, take away some bits? Because normally cat food isn't just, like, this perfectly flat thing, you know? Hmm. I think I like it better just flat. <laughs> that just looks kind of weird. 
But yeah, let's see how this looks on its own. I want to make sure it doesn't look like dirt. I mean, if I didn't tell you it was dirt, it probably wouldn't even come to mind. Yeah, that looks like cat food, right? That totally does. It's not dirt, okay? It's not dirt. Let's copy that. Place it. So this one is going to be water. Um, I, Once again, ideally you'd have more than one dish for water and more than one dish for food for all these cats, but I'll just have one of each. Limited space. Let me get rid of all that. Okay, you can actually get fluids. You can actually chisel fluids. They don't really behave like fluids. They just kind of look like fluids, and I don't think they have an animation, so they won't flow or anything like that. I'm not sure whether I can just go to water and chisel it. I might have to make a chisel like fluid tank. There's this fluid tank thing. I'll explain it if I need to do it. Do I have a bucket? Yes. So let's see if this works. No, it's pointing. You can see the tooltip up there pointing to sand. It doesn't even see the water because, yeah, water isn't like an object. It, it, your clicks kind of register through it. Yeah, it just messes with the sand beneath it. Okay, so I do need to make that fluid tank. Let's see. Bits? Bit tank? Chiseled fluid bit tank. Glass, iron, and wood. Alright, let's try this thing out. So I believe how it works is you fill it up with something, like water. And then you just extract the bits. How do you do it? Left click, right click, right click. Okay. Yeah, so it gives you a bunch of water bits. Grab a bunch. Place these in here as... Plain? Uh, connected plane. Ah, wrong one. And there we go. We got water. Oh, I thought it didn't have an animation. It actually does. A little bit hard to see, but it does have an animation. It doesn't flow, however. That I'm sure of. So if you, like, put it on the wall, for example. Wait, it does flow? Wow, okay, I'm totally wrong. Ah, I ran out of bits. Let's experiment with this on something that's more flat. Yeah. I guess it does flow. Sort of. I mean, obviously there's no, like, connection between this one and this one, but it looks like if it's on a wall or something, it flows down, and if it's down on the ground, it doesn't. Neat. Okay. All right, making really good progress. We got a scratching post, we got a bunch of litter boxes, food, it's not dirt, and water. The symmetry of this bothers me. But then again, is that too close to the litter box? You really don't want to put food and stuff close to the litter box. Mm. I'll put it over there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, um, I think that's it for stuff I want to put on the ground, so I think it's time to start working on cat shelves and window bed things. I think there's two basic designs of sort of windowsill cat beds. There's a kind that connect with suction cups up top, so it's a flat line and then suction cups that attach above, kind of suspending it there. And then there's a the kind that connect with brackets below the shelf. And uh, I think the window ones might look neater. And also, I think they'll just work better with this design, because I think it'd be hard to have them connect to a bracket down here, because of the whole inset window thing. So, let's try it. I'm going to try making the basic shelf slash bed out of wood. Um, and of course, it should be soft, so I don't want it just wood, so I'm going to put a little layer of pink wool on top of that, make it nice and soft for the kitties. And then I'm just going to use like a white color to be kind of the, the rope that connects to the window and connects to suction cups. 
So let's see how this is going to work. I'm going to draw directly on the window. Oh, it's going to be really hard to see the borders here. Christ. Like, really hard. <laughs> like, impossible? You know what I should do, actually? There. That kind of works, I guess. Sort of? If I do it from, like, way back here, yeah, that's good. So I'll have it a little bit up. Like that. Let's make sure that's... Yep. Not going over into another block, so we can get rid of these now. Yep. Connected material. Or connected plane. Build that out a bit. I want it to go as wide as the block. I think that's it. That's another block, right? Yeah. Okay. And then let's put a layer of pink wool on top. Beautiful. Okay, now it's going to be a little bit tricky to put this rope, because that's like a diagonal. Um, okay, I think I know how to do that. Yeah, so I'm just drawing a diagonal here. I'm just using this wood as sort of like a board to place them diagonally. And now I should be able to get rid of them. Connected material loop. Oh. That's not what I wanted. Never mind. Uh, connected plane. There we go. Much better. So now I've got a diagonal of them. However, they should be connected to a suction cup. So let's try to kind of simulate that by... Oops. Maybe just putting like... That. Let's make sure I get this one back here, otherwise it'll look weird from the outside. Yeah, I think that looks right. I mean, normally a suction cup is circular, but whatever. Oh wait, this whole thing should be shifted down one. Whoops. There we go. Yeah, how cool is that? Oh my god, I'm so happy with the stuff that I'm making. This is ridiculous. It's also incredibly time consuming, but this is so cool. That's beautiful. And now I should be able to copy that design. Only takes up one block space, so I can just copy it. Oh, it doesn't take up one block space. This is outside of the block. Ah, that's okay. I can just add that into the others. No big deal. I should just be able to plop this down wherever I want. <laughs> Look at that. I have to kind of fix this a little bit, but... Beautiful! Oh, the cats are gonna love this! Okay, so that's the window part. I'm gonna fix up this one, but um, I'm also gonna make shelves that go up and around. Kind of up even further, all the way around above the windows. There we go. I think I've got my basic design for the wall-mounted shelves. Going with a bottom bracket. No suction cup for these. And this design should work on either type of paper. Like, it, the connecting bracket shouldn't connect to an area that's paper, it should connect to the wood part. So I could copy of this and put this around. Takes up one block as well. Okay, so... Wrong mode. Place. There we go. Yeah, so I can just put these wherever I want. And I don't have to put them directly in the middle either. I could, you can place it on a per block uh, basis. Although it doesn't look like you. Oh, I can't place it here because the torch is taking up this space. That's why. Yeah, and if you paste it on a boundary, it just kind of divides it up into two different blocks. So where should they be? We want it so that the cats can easily get onto them. Alright, like, this might be a little bit too high to jump. I mean, probably not for a cat. <laughs> but it'd be nice if they had a little bit of help getting up here. And then from here, maybe they could go up and up and up and over the window and around. Back down. There should be no dead ends when you're trying to catify your house like this. It should be kind of a loop that they can go up one way and go down a different way. So they can never get trapped or anything. 
All right. I do declare this place symmetrically catified. Got a whole cat superhighway up here. So at any point from either the left or right side, cats can go up to the window, and then from the window they can go up to one of the corners, and then from there they can go this way, go around the whole room, or start going this way, go around the whole room. So yeah, they can just keep going and never get trapped anywhere. Um, should I put some way to help them get up to this one? It's kind of isolated, isn't it? Maybe like here? So they can go from here and then to the window, or from here to there? So many choices! From here to there to there, from here to the... Lag spike. From here to there to there. To there to there to there. There's so many possibilities. Oh, they're going to love it. I think I'm done. No, 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 no. There's one thing I want to try. So I want to light this place. I mean, it's already lit fairly well from the torches, but I really don't like the torches, especially in here. What can, what's with this display? Can I do chiseling bits on this? Uh, no, that didn't work. Odd. Anyway, yeah, um, the torches work for light, but I don't really like it. I want something different, something non-flammable. It's very, very not safe. I don't want the cats getting burned. So I'm going to experiment with glowstone. Chiseling bits, glowstone. I know that, um, well, obviously glowstone gives off light. Let's make some. Right, so glowstone gives off light, but I'm not 100% sure how glowstone bits behave. I've only messed around with it a tiny bit in the past. I think not, uh, I think a single bit won't emit light, but I think once enough glowstone bits touch each other, I think it does start emitting light. So let's mess around with it. Let me eat this and let's see how this works I suppose it's good that it's dark let me go somewhere where it's super dark okay <laughs> it's all flash for a second huh that's odd looking and then once you complete it, it just becomes full glowstone. So, it's emitting light, but... There's a witch up there. Gotcha. So, it's emitting a very small amount of light, but it itself is not actually lit. It lights the stuff around it, but not itself, which looks really strange. I don't like that. What if I do a single bit? So yeah, a couple bits, you probably can't really see, but putting some bits down, nothing, nothing. Yep, and then once I reach a certain amount of bits, it actually emits light. <laughs> that is so weird looking. Okay, well, yeah, that's not going to work. It doesn't emit enough light, and it also just looks really, really weird. Alright, I was looking around at all my lighting options, and there's not too much that would really work. There's a bunch of torches, of course. There's even some candles, but I'm not going for... Uh, you know, I don't want a, a fire source. I want something else. Um, and I'm going to try something I've never tried before. There's a mod called Project Red Illumination. It has a bunch of different colors of lanterns and stuff. And out of all of them, get a look here. There's a bunch of different types. There's like whole blocks, and I'm not sure what these are. There's even lit button, uh, lit buttons, fixtures. Uh, but I think the lantern would probably be the most aesthetically appropriate thing. So pretty simple. Just a bunch of stone and redstone, and only kind of weird thing is this white aluminar. But uh, that's super easy to make. It's just, uh, I think, redstone and glowstone. So let's make four of these and see how they look. Huh. 
That didn't really change the light too much. I think it might be the torches outside kind of coming in. I've noticed when you chisel stuff, it tends to make outside light able to penetrate. I'm gonna get rid of some of these just so it's a bit darker. That didn't do much either. I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't even need any light at all. Oh. Okay, that made it really bright. How much light do these give off? This might these might give off more light than normal. Let me turn on the light sensor thing. Let's see. Nah, I think that's normal. So it's on a little stick. Oh, cool! It's smart about uh, which way it faces, too. So the little stick part comes out of whatever area you click on, right? So if I put it on the side, it... Yeah! Oh my god! That is so cool! So you can place it on a ceiling, on the floor, or on the side, and it's intelligent about how it looks. That's super cool. Okay, so where do I want these placed? On the floor is a little bit weird. I'd rather them be somewhere else. Maybe just up there? What if there were one in from each corner? Like that. Yeah. Looks kind of cool. I think this place is 100% done. Alright, I think the only thing left to do now is kind of clean up the work zone outside. Put down the torches again on the outside, around the house. And then get the cats inside. To name the cats, I need to give each of them a name tag. I've only gotten one name tag, and that's from the Balls of Fur. They came from the cats themselves. And I was just looking up the recipe for name tags. It's really strange. There's not that many ways to get it. Either through a mana infusion, which I can't do because I can't make the alchemy catalyst. Dungeon chests. I mean, that's just a crapshoot. And villager trades. Also a crapshoot. You gotta find a librarian. So... What I'm gonna hope for is hope I can find two more name tags and all these balls of fur. Because while I've been building that cat building the wonderful I should give it a name huh well I've been building that they've given me a stack and a half of balls of fur <laughs> so let's see what we get and hope for two name tags they should be a very good test on whether they give you any rare stuff like diamonds oh I think I ran out of space ooh Gold nugget. Whoops. Oh, we got one more name tag. No. That makes me sad. One's going to be unnamed. Well, there's only one thing to do. I need that name tag. So, I believe this building... Yeah, this is the building I found. I think in the last episode which has a dungeon in the basement. So let's go see if we can find a chest in the dungeon. Oh, right. Last slice of the cake. Oh, I still can't eat it. Uh, yeah, let's go see if we can find a chest in the dungeon that has a name tag. I'm just going to pretty much ignore everything else unless it's like really, really, really good. I'm just looking for a name tag. Well, my dungeon adventures didn't go so well. I didn't find a name tag and I ended up dying a couple times. But anyway, we're back. Uh, another way I can actually get name tags is by fishing, but the chance of getting a name tag each time you fish is, mm, I think, less than 1% if you're using an unenchanted rod. And even with an enchanted one, I think it's like 1.2% or something. So that would take a very, very long time. So I think, I think I'm just going to leave one unnamed for now until I get more balls of fur from them and get another name tag. I really didn't want to do that, but there's no really easy way to get another name tag right now. So you are Skitty. You are Lytton. 
and you are cat. All of her. Could this be the one? Ah, oh, it's just an ink sack. Okay. Let me try to get them inside somehow. There we go. Got them placed. Got Cat up there. Skitty in the window. And Lydon down here. I was going to try to get them to come in just with their own pathfinding, but that was not working out, and then I realized I could just use the golden lasso. It's way, way easier. Just pick them up and put them pretty much wherever you want. Of course, you can only place them on a per block basis, which doesn't really work with things like this, so I ended up having to build kind of like a little platform here, put the cat on the platform, and then kind of push it onto the onto where I wanted it to be, and then destroy the platform. And Skitty here got hurt a little bit. They accidentally got stuck on a wall and started suffocating, but they're okay. Okay, one last chance for another name tag. Got six more balls of fur. Ooh, we got a diamond! No name tag, but we got a diamond. First one. No luck. That's alright. It'll happen soon enough. These things are little fur machines. Alright, well I think it's done. I just want to take another look at the whole thing, because I'm incredibly impressed with it. I'm This is by far the thing I'm happiest with that I've built. It's kind of amazing. It took an incredibly long time. I mean, I've been recording for a little bit over four hours, just to, mostly just to make this one building. So this is not something I'm going to do very often, make something this elaborate, but I am so happy with it. Everything's got depth to it, got a nice roof, made out of beautiful maple wood, little pillar, kitty cat ears, entrance, flowers, flower box outside the window. I really went just all the way in with chiseling bits. Fully catified litter boxes, scratching, post, water and food. Lanterns. It's beautiful. I love my kitties. Litten, Skitty, and Cat. Okay, now this is actually your last chance for a name tag for this episode. No luck. Okay, you'll have to wait for the next one. Well, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and uh, when I return, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll just admire this thing that I've built for an entire episode. No, I'm just kidding. I'll actually do something. <laughs>